Hi YouTube, Darth here. We've all got our favorite maps and today I'm going to talk about my own top 5 best conquest maps from Battlefield 4. While I'm pulling some of these maps from my own personal opinions, I'm also going to be looking at the data from Battlefield 4 and talking about the balance or imbalance of some of these maps. Some are going to be from expansions and some are from vanilla. For the balance data used in this video, I'm going to be relying on information gathered by Reddit user MachiaMD. I'll link the data in the description below so you can check it out after the video. So let's get started on the top 5 maps of Battlefield 4. Number 5 on my top 5 list is Goldmode Railway. It's big, it's wide, it's open. Pretty much everything I might normally dislike in a Battlefield map. But it works! This is a vanilla map and launched with the game, and while I initially was a little resistant to this map, the gameplay won me over. Enough so that I did my very first battle plan describing the tactics and strategies of this map. Bullmoon Railway is very vehicle heavy, featuring every vehicle in Battlefield 4's launch with the obvious exception of the boats. But unlike other vehicle heavy giant maps, this map makes good use of infantry gameplay. The trifecta of points in the north, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie are some of the best infantry action in the vanilla game. Nearly everything at these points is destructible, and infantry can easily run between them for a relatively fast-paced action. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of the coastline points on another very large map, Bandar Desert, from the Armored Kill expansion in Battlefield 3. Now, I see a lot of players trying to attack Foxtrot in the very south of the map, but it's actually not the most important point. The most important capture point is the key feature of Delta, the moving train. It will often decide the match, as one team can generally keep a hold of it the entire time. If I did have one criticism of Goldmode Railway, it's that it's exceptionally hard for jets and helicopters to avoid the MAA, as there is nearly unlimited lines of sight for the air. Additionally, the difficulty of capturing Delta back from an opposing team is unusually high, but that only accentuates the necessity of capturing Delta early. And this is how the map looks in the balance data as well, as many of the matches end in a one-sided round, but at the same time, the map win percentages are also very close to even, with either team quite capable of securing victory. Ultimately, Goldmud is a map where a smart team can easily dominate a lesser team, and it's one of the few great large vehicle maps. Next up on the list at number 4 is Siege of Shanghai. Now, I know a lot of people are probably sick of this map at this point, but Siege of Shanghai is easily one of the best battlefield maps ever created. It's clear that DICE poured a ton of effort in this map as it's the set piece of all the promo that was done for Battlefield 4's Levolution system. And that would be a shame if the map didn't also play out pretty well on Conquest. It's actually one of the most balanced maps in the game as well. Few teams score huge runaway victories and generally either side can take this map from the other on Conquest. This is probably helped somewhat by the roughly symmetrical capture point layout, but I think the key to the magic on Shanghai is infantry mobility and a near constant stream of vehicle on vehicle and infantry versus infantry action in different settings. As a vehicle, you've got a lot of strategic and tactical choice about where to place yourself and you're never far from the action. As infantry, every point has a little something different to how it plays out. The map is very accessible to new players and veterans alike. And I think that leads to this map, despite its age, being one of the top most played maps in Battlefield 4. I think if I could levy any complaints about Sizu Shanghai, it would be that the tower gameplay becomes a little stale and long-lasting over a small area, or that the attack chopper has superpowers on this map due to the easily broken lines of sight. But these are relatively small complaints on an otherwise solid map. Diverting from vanilla maps, at number 3 I have the Dragon's Teeth map Propaganda. Again, this is a great map for a mix of both vehicles and infantry play. Unlike the previous two selections, Propaganda has no air vehicles of any kind, and I think combined with an action-oriented layout feels a lot like some of the best maps of Battlefield 3, particularly the maps in the Aftermath DLC. Now while I love Propaganda and it feels fun while I play it, Propaganda is actually not a very balanced map. The Chinese team is actually more likely to win propaganda than the US for a variety of factors, and distance from spawn is a major reason. Also, roughly a full third of propaganda rounds end in a one-sided match where the winning team has more than 50% of their tickets remaining after the end. So it's not the best balanced map on this list, but I think the action helps to overcome the deficiencies of this map. What I really like about propaganda is that this map has an interesting two-step dynamic where taking the rail side can really initiate a torrent of quick captures. This map does get particularly zerg like where single man defense can become pointless, but a clever player can do really well on this map by employing a bit of strategy and tactics. Propaganda also plays well to just about any class, which I can't really say about many maps in Battlefield 4, so Propaganda is a great map that suffers from a few imbalances. Number 2 on my list is Zavad 311. 
Again, a great action map with a lovely balance of combined arms warfare. Unlike Propaganda, Zavod 311 does have air power in the form of transport and scout helicopters. They add just enough zip and firepower to this map to make the otherwise long size of the map feel much more reachable for each team. But how does this map play out on average? Well, it shouldn't surprise you that Zavod 311 is one of the more balanced maps in Battlefield 4. With both sides having relatively good access to the whole of the map, the break between teams is small, with the US only squeaking out with the win a little bit more than the Russians. Most matches tend to land somewhere between close and non-blowouts, so the map keeps the action somewhat close between the two teams. Honestly, I think the infantry action at Charlie and Delta on the large Conquest version of Zavod 311 is some of the best play you'll find in the game. If I had a complaint, it would be that the Russian spawns at Delta make it much more difficult for the Russians to hold on to the two center points than the US team. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is what caused the win percentage disparity on this otherwise great map. Want to play as a tank? Zavod 311 has you covered. Prefer to ground pound? There's tons of opportunities to match against infantry. Want to be a sniping coward? Every point has a roof or an overwatch to cover at least half of that point. Combine that great infantry action with the ability for vehicle players to really show what they're made of, and Zavod 311 easily slots in as the second best map in Battlefield 4. Let's take a look at some of the maps that didn't quite make this list, but that are also some of my favorites. First up is Wayland Peaks, a map that is pretty great for infantry-centric gameplay. However, being part of what is arguably one of the worst expansions in the game doesn't help it at all when the very next map in the rotation is probably Dragon Pass. Next is Waybreaker, a map with an interesting crossbreed dynamic of outside for vehicles and inside for infantry that gets repeated again in Hammerhead. Waybreaker would probably play better if the Chinese team didn't routinely get a third RCB because people aren't smart enough to capture or challenge on Bravo. Then there's Operation Mortar, another naval strike map that has great interplay of air, land, and naval vessels in a relatively tight package. The balance is a bit problematic on Operation Mortar as lopsided matches happen in a third of all matches and the US team tends to win the map more often. Finally are the community maps, Dragon Valley and Operation Outbreak. I happen to think that Dragon Valley takes a little bit too long to play on the average match because of its size, particularly on large maps, and Operation Outbreak is good, but it just missed this list. Also, Outbreak skews just a little bit in favor of the US team. That's right, I am picking my number one map in Battlefield 4 as Pearl Market. This Dragon's Teeth map is about as perfect as an infantry player could possibly wish for. Now, because of the verticality and somewhat confusing initial layout of this map, a lot of players have probably been turned off from Pearl Market. But let me convince you with data. This map is one of the top most played maps in Battlefield 4. It is very nearly perfectly balanced. Neither team has a major advantage over the other. Less than 10% of matches end in runaway scores, and almost half of them are very close. That makes it literally the closest matched map in all of Battlefield 4. The only thing it wants for is vehicle play, and that's really not the focus of this map, and what it does, it does exceptionally well. That being said, the lack of destruction on Pearl Market is somewhat lamentable, as only superficial facades and walls can be punched out. In general, I think Battlefield 4 lacks some of the destruction of its predecessors to both make room for Levolution and because we still had to worry about last-gen systems. Hopefully that downward feature trend won't continue in the future. When I think about great maps in the Battlefield franchise, I think about maps that play well to the game's individual strengths. In Battlefield 3 and 4, while there are a lot of great vehicle maps, the concentration of the game's customization and balance has always been in infantry play. While I don't think the game should be all about infantry, the maps that seemingly play the best don't relegate infantry pacing to the sidelines. I'm talking about maps like Pearl Market, Sign Crossing, and Grand Bazaar. And like those last two, I think Pearl Market is a classic and one that might just show up in future Battlefield titles. Once you've got the map layout down, Pearl Market plays out like an infantry lover's dream. There's an almost infinite number of ways to flank your enemies, turn a game around, and go on insane kill streaks. That being said, there is a definite learning curve to the map, much like Flood Zone, from which Pearl Market derives a lot of its game assets. And all things considered, Pearl Market is easily my pick for the best map of Battlefield 4. You're never far from the action on Pearl Market, and games can turn pretty easily with a dedicated squad playing the objective. Pearl Market is really a refreshing difference in a game that is overflowing with huge vehicle-centric maps. That's it for my top 5 list of Battlefield 4 maps. I'm sure there's different opinions out there in my audience, and I'd love to hear your top 5s in the comments below. If you're new around here, please take a moment to take a look at my channel and consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, YouTube.